download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. Hey, <laughs> how do you do that? How do you uh, perform downstrokes when you play rhythm that fast? And there's a science to it that most people aren't aware of. And in this video, I'm going to give you some practice methods, some insights on what is really the challenge when you can't you know, do it fast enough. Um, so let's just handle this problem. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, we got a new program out called Ride the Lightning. And uh, it's all about the riffs and the licks. So go check that out. Click the link below this video. But for now, let's look into how to play riffs like this. Um, so we struggle, right? We practice and then suddenly we realize that I, we can't do it fast enough. Then what happens? What's the next step for most people and for me when I was struggling with this? Well, it is to tense up, right? We ten we kind of, we use our whole arm. You know, we go from to using our hand to suddenly, and then, the, you know, I got tension in my lower arm here, my elbow, and that is just a surefire way to, to hurt yourself. Um, but why do we do it? There's, a, there's, an, there's an insight in that that we need to extract from the fact that the body tenses up and it uses the arm instead of the hand. It is to create a pendulum. And uh, if I'm trying to do something very fast here with my, and I can't do it in a, with rhythm, with consistency, like I don't want to, I want something that's consistent, right? And then I'm using my arm because that's a heavier pendulum. So I can push it. If I tense up and then muscular, uh, the muscular tension is just one impulse. Then because of its tension, I can push it and then it comes back. And because of its weight, it becomes pretty even, right? So if I want, you know, it's, it's hard when it, when it doesn't, the, the hand doesn't weigh much and it's a totally different movement. So that's why we use our arm because we get a huge, very heavy pendulum. And then all I need to do, the brain needs to do is to push it, you know, so it's tense and then I can push it and then it comes back. So it's kind of, right? And then it, it jumps back at me. I know this is perhaps, but if you, if you feel what is actually going on when I, it's like, uh, and then it becomes a simpler movement for the brain to perform. And because of the weight of the arm, it becomes more even, right? But that's not the solution. It's just a shortcut that will, you know, end up hurting you because, you know, imagine playing a whole concert in like two hours or like that. Uh, you'll be exhausted and then you, you know, have to take a couple of weeks off before you can do it again. So the secret really to doing that is to recognize, first of all, where do we create the pendulum? Because we need one. And then say, okay, if we need something heavier, something that can swing, just imagine a pendulum. You know, that's why, you know, in the old clocks, old fashioned clocks, they have a pendulum swinging. The reason why they have that is to get consistency in the tick tock, tick tock, because that heaviness in the pendulum really creates something very even. Instead, just imagine something that didn't weigh much and it was just like nothing. It was just, there was no weight at the end of the pendulum. The, the, the chances that that would be uneven because of the lack of weight would be much bigger. I hope that really resonates with you on a physical level. Um, but so what we need is a pendulum, but in the hand, not like this, but like this. So we need to swing the hand first of all, and we need to relax our three fingers here to create that heaviness. So instead of it being like something you have to control, the brain has to control every movement, you create a swing, like a circular movement. So if I hold my pick like that, or my hand like this, so it extends out from the arm, then it's really hard to do it. But if I do this, then suddenly I get some weight there. I get a kind of a pendulum going, right? And then if I relax my three fingers that are not holding the pick, then I get even more weight. So now I got something like this going. And this is actually an exercise you can do. Uh, you know, you can bring a pick or you can just, you know, hold your fingers like that as if you were holding a pick and then do this. See what I'm doing here? Just from, from another angle like that. That is the actual movement. You see, it's circular like that. It's not like this. It's not like an ax movement. It's a circular movement like that. And you can do that all the time. Uh, then, you know, when you're walking around talking to people all day, you can practice that, 
And, and you don't need to do anything but this. Just swing your hand like this. See how, how fast and consistent you can get. But that's the first insight, right? That compensates or that kind of looks at it. Why does the body do this with the arm? Why is the, that the most intuitive thing to do when you can't play fast enough is to use your whole arm. That's why it's because of the pendulum effect, right? And you must create that in the hand. I can do this forever. I can only do this with a tense arm for so long. The next thing you need to give your brain is an opportunity because uh, to, to, um, to coordinate things. Because when you can't play it fast enough, it's not just a matter of not being able to physically move your fingers up and down like that. It's simply more a loss of control because you can't process downstrokes that fast. It's just too fast. It's like when you're trying to talk and you go, but at some point you can't, you know, it's it's so fast. But and then you can't really, you can't say fast enough. And that's approximately the same level of speed as when you lose control over your downstroke. But it just becomes uncoordinated. And that's because the brain can't process it. But it, what you need to do then is group the downstrokes. Please listen now. You have to group them. That is so important. So they, they instead of having one downstroke be one unit, you make three downstrokes or four downstrokes be one unit. So you take your downstrokes, put them in a box and group them. And then you put a button on that little box so you can push that button and get four downstrokes. ba da da, -da. But that's what the brain does. It does the brrrr. It pushes the button. So how do we create the box and the button? Accenting. That's the secret. So instead of just practicing, right? You pra you practice only downstrokes here. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. Ba 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 ba. Right? And you want to do that relentlessly. That is the secret to getting from where you are now to just hyperspeed when it comes to downstrokes. So, and the way to practice that is to use a metronome. And, and this might be, you know, a super boring class with the metronome. And, you know, I'm a rock player. I don't want to do stuff like this. Look how classical it looks. You want to do this, right? And it's not boring. It's exciting because it really works. So... One two three four. 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 Ba ba ba. And you want to exaggerate that loud stroke in the beginning. One two three four. 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 Right. Right. That's what you want to do. And then you you can play the metronome game, as I call it. You start somewhere, you see, okay, what's my top speed here where I can do the up, the downstrokes so, you know, fast, but I'm still relaxed and I'm not using my arm. And I can do the accenting. Without the accenting, you're not practicing. So remember that. Because you'll never get beyond that single note pattern in the brain. You need the accents to group them up, right? So you, you find the, the top place here. And then you go back 10 clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or you go back five clicks. You decide your game. But I'm just gonna go back 10 clicks and then move all, all the way to my top speed up here. One little click at a time. So now I'm gonna do like, let's say 50 rep repetitions. What is one repetition? It's what is grouped in a little box. So it's one, two, three, four, five, okay? And then I'm simply gonna count. One, two, three, four. And this is much slower than I can do it. So I wanna practice speed class. Why are we practicing slow now? Because being at the top of your capacity is not where you learn. The second the body is stressed, it's learning nothing. So you wanna step back and then you wanna go, want to gain total control over the accents and just do the work. Just get in the repetitions. Right. One, two, two, three. That's how the brain groups the four strokes. By you doing this focused work. Yeah, I do that 50 times. Go up one click. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five. 
and I want to count. And that's actually what keeps you in the, in the groove here. Counting is what keeps you in that meditative state where you get in the perfect repetitions and remember the Move all the way up. Once you hit what was before your top speed, you're going to surpass it by one or two clicks. Fantastic. You write down everything all the time. Have a little piece of paper next to where you practice and do the metronome game here. Write down your top speed where you can play it absolutely perfect with the accents, without straining and stressing, but it's, it's also the fastest that you can do, you know, uh, while you still are relaxed and unstressed and no tension and you do it with your hand and not your arm, right? Then you go back and you can always stop this just right where you came to, right? Okay, I had my top speed, I went back 10 clicks, and you write the numbers down on the metronome. If you haven't got a metronome, get one. Now. Now. You know, you should be ordering one right now from whatever website. I really like the analog ones because they give me a visual representation of what is going on here. Uh, the numbers. You can use one online as well, but, you know, I really recommend these. Um, so, you write it down. And then you go back 10 clicks. Oh, if 10 clicks isn't enough, if you, I'm, not, I'm not progressing class. Every time I reach my top speed, it's the same. Go back to 20 clicks, you know, or increase the number of repetitions. Do 100 on each level until you have a game that works. Until you have a game where once you reach your top speed, you surpass it every single time with one or two clicks, right? Once you've been doing this over and over again for a couple of weeks or for a couple of months, then you, you will, you know, you're... then suddenly you're, you're so much faster and you're accurate and you're precise and you are relaxed in your hand and you don't, you're not using your arm and you can really play the music and enjoy being that fast. The next time I'm going to show you a couple of, or in the next video, I'm going to show you a couple of exercise methods that you can use to really break through um, if you're stuck on some level. So see you in that. And go check out the new program, Bundle, that we have available right now. Um, see you tomorrow. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.